Assalamualaikum, hello everyone. Uh, today we're gonna do pen spinfisher, and this one is the spinfisher VI 6500 Life Liner reel. Now this is a different reel from the regular spinfisher, and as you can see, LL is stands for Life Liner. Life Liner is a system in which uh, Shimano calls it Beat Runner and Daiwa calls it. Uh, I forgot what it's called but basically uh, what it means by lifelining lifeliner is that uh, whenever this uh, reel is used for life baiting uh, specifically so this one right here right here is a mechanism whereby uh, I tighten up the drag it has two drag system uh, the first one is, the, is uh, the top drag system and the second one is the bottom drag system this is not to be confused with uh, rear drag but it works uh, about the same so whenever we're gonna like uh, let letting out the life bait usually not all the time uh, and whenever we're gonna engage the bear arm when we let out the appropriate amount of line uh, when we press this the drag system will transfer to the rear drag which means that it will not be using the front drag system but whenever we engage the reel so the drag system will transfer from using the rear system to the front system which is very different um, this reel has its own niche market uh, which is substantial enough uh, for a pen to be producing this kind of reel and for Shimano to be producing this kind of reel and usually from what I use myself and from what I read I read and I see on YouTube videos uh, most people will use this for life bidding in uh, inshore and offshore and uh, it has a surprising following in the carp fishing community as, as well but uh, from what I can tell this reel uh, despite it's being like a really good reel uh, it has its own niche and it's not like a huge following which is for good reason because I'll show you now what I have in, in my hand is uh, Shimano Spheros uh, in this size 10,000 range which is uh, the same size as Spinfisher 6500 and the weight difference of this both reel is uh, I would say pretty significant there we go now this is Ferros size uh, 10,000, the latest Ferros and you can see that the weight of this reel is about 720 grams and for this reel it's 800 grams so it is um, heavier compared to the uh, other reels of its uh, size and the bait runner system, the, the lifeliner system in this case is the lifeliner system uh, not many will use it because the system has its own specific use even me myself I use it but not all the time uh, which I use only on life baiting when I'm, use, when I'm uh, life baiting I'll use it but not uh, that uh, often compared to this regular reel which uh, I have found no uh, significant uh, uses between the two system which is about the same and but anyways uh, it's gained quite a following uh, and it has its own, its own uh, use so for people who really like using the lifeliner system the big runner system definitely get one this is a good reel in my books uh, may be a little bit more expensive but again it's a good reel and one thing worth mentioning is that uh, 
in this particular reel the lifeliner system has four settings one two three four the further it goes the stronger the drag will be uh, but i have never used four usually i'll use only two uh, why because uh, two is like uh, the the strength of my thumb whenever i push the system so uh, which comes to the to my own conclusion that uh, this system is good like four drag rings is good but then again i never use the third and the fourth so i think in future model what pen should do maybe in my suggestion this is my suggestion is to reduce the drag range to maybe two or three which even three i don't even remember i use it but two is like uh, the most i use because whenever i flip it usually it goes at two so i don't really like do this one slowly like one and two no i just flip it and it goes at two three and four maybe a little bit overkill but then again uh, maybe pen found out that a good fishing technique some certain fishing technique will benefit from the uh, third and fourth progression but again for me myself i've never really i've never used four i don't remember i used three uh even one i don't think i use it but mostly i use just two because it's uh, the the strength of my thumb whenever i flip the switch so yeah it's a good reel by no means it's a bad reel and it's a good system but then again maybe four is maybe a little bit too much in my opinion well uh anyways as usual i'm gonna do uh tear down and i'm gonna reassemble back and if as usual if you need a cleaning video make sure you comment you mention in the comments below if people need it then i'll make a cleaning video as well i only use kerosene alcohol and for most plastic parts uh some sort of things like this wd-40 and stuff but anyways um let's take a look at this reel i've used this for almost three years four years now landed a good amount of king mackerel or spanish mackerel if you're in the oceano region uh a solid reel it's a good reel a uh, pen really uh, like uh take a very thorough approach with this reel uh only my only complaint is that the entire river system maybe they can improve it a little bit more maybe change it because the entire reverse clutch that they're using is like a generic chinese type of entire reverse clutch for smaller wrist it's fine but when it bumps up to the size 10,000 reel then a much more robust entire reverse system will be much more beneficial to the real uh, longevity uh, in the long run okay all right so take a look at this real beautiful piece of reel very very beautiful one of the most beautiful i think in my book at least but there are much more beautiful reels and as usual make sure you so, uh, subscribe to my channel i'm a little bit low in the subscription site as of this date which i'm making this video on the this is 23rd of january 2023 so Please subscribe to my channel it will help me a lot and will help my channel grow and i'll be able to you to make uh, much more real videos in the future uh, with the funds from youtube of course okay so without any more uh, further ado let's just begin with the uh, teardown
Okay, so uh, let's begin with the primary uh, disassembling, primary teardown. Uh, but before we begin, I would like to test uh, because from what I've uh, seen in videos and from what I've read, uh, the rotor paint is different from the main body paint. And I think I was told and I've read that uh, the paint will strip uh, from the rotor uh, so let's give it a test so I'm gonna use a little bit of alcohol right here isopropyl alcohol and let's see All right and let's give it a little bit rub on the rear on the rotor I mean I was told that the paint on the rotor will yep so the paint on the rotor will strip if you use alcohol so be careful when you're cleaning the rotor uh, try not to use alcohol or maybe kerosene which i'm using i'm gonna use so as you can see this there's, there's definitely paint on this tissue paper so be careful on the rotor and i don't uh, from what i've read the body is different from the rotor so let's give it a test Hopefully it's different. If it's not, then we I have to be I when I'm cleaning the body and side plate and rotor, I cannot use uh, kerosene or uh, alcohol. Hopefully the paint doesn't strip on this side and doesn't seem to be stripping. Yeah, looks good. And let's give it a little, bit, a little bit more test on the rotor to confirm. Yeah, it's definitely stripping. So that confirms one thing that the paint on the rotor is different from the body. So whenever you're cleaning the rotor, make sure you don't use alcohol or a kerosene or any other corrosive uh, cleaning agent. But if you still want to use it, go ahead, not a problem. I think the rotor is aluminum, if I'm not mistaken. So it's very robust rotor. I think on this one it's plastic. Yep, you can see the flex. Uh, uh, not plastic, it's called uh, polymer, is the better word. So on Spheros, it's a uh, polymer rotor. Uh, it, it is robust enough for its use and on pen it's uh, metal, some sort of metal so you can see there's no flex whatsoever on rotor, there's flex on the bill arm but there's no flex on the rotor okay anyway so let's just begin uh, and we're gonna remove the handle this is a power handle right go and the spool, uh, the spool is a uh, simple design, it's like other uh, drag system of other reels, nothing complicated at all. I'm gonna, I'm going to tear down the knob as well, as usual, I think if you've been watching my videos, I also do uh, tear down on the knob as well. Some knobs will be harder than others, but from what I'm seeing right now, it's pretty easy. Alright, so now let's remove the spool. Simple design, nothing complicated, uh, but you have to be very careful when you're dealing with these small springs because this spring will bend, it will be misshapen if you don't handle it with care. So just be careful with that. And let's see what we have here. I don't think there's any problem. This is my first time doing this reel, so I don't see anything too complicated. But as usual, just be careful with what, with what you're doing. Okay, uh, I think this is one of those reels where you have to remove the shaft in order to remove the rotor. But hold on, give me a few seconds. Yep, uh, I think this confirms it. Uh, this is uh, one of those reels where you have to remove the shaft in order to remove the rotor. Uh, which is nothing, uh, not complicated, but then again, uh, for this kind of reels, you have to do it. Uh, with uh, its own uh, steps okay uh, let's see uh, but anyways uh, nothing much can be done so we'll just have to open uh, 
yeah, I think we have to open the uh, body first before we can remove the rotor. So this is for the primary disassembling, and next we're going to do uh, the spool, the handle, and the drag knob, and then after that, it will be all about the main body. Alright, so we're going to do uh, the uh, spool, drag knob, and maybe we'll do the handle as well in one go, because we're going to spend uh, the bulk of the uh, teardown video on this body. So anyway, so let's just uh, do it one by one, and we'll start off with the spool. And remember to subscribe to my videos and tell your friends to subscribe. Uh, I hope that I can get uh, monetization by the end of this year. I hope the sooner the better. But anyways, so let's just begin. So this is the clip. You can, if you lose this, you can easily make one with single strand wire. From the looks of it, I think this is number six, seven. No, this is pretty thick. So I think it's number eight American fishing wire or marlin. You can use either one. All right, and let's see what the drug stack looks like. Pretty simple, straightforward drag stack, uh, nothing complicated. And sometimes it's pretty hard to remove the drag stack. Sometimes, not all the time. There we go. So this is a specialized drag design. So if you lose this or if you need to change this, you have to order from Penn. If you're in North America or maybe Australia to some extent, uh, you're definitely going to be, it's going to be uh, much easier to find parts. But if you're in other parts of the world, which I'm from Malaysia, uh, pen parts, uh, it's a little bit of a challenge to get. So just be careful. You can definitely get it, but in case where they don't have the parts on hand, it's either going to be a few weeks or in some cases, uh, even after one year, I still couldn't get any part. So just be careful when you're dealing with uh, pen spare parts. If you don't have it, then if it's not easily available, then it's going to be a little bit of a problem for me. Okay, so anyways, that is the bottom uh, carbon fiber drag, and this is the washer. And from what I'm seeing, it has its own design compared to other washers, so be mindful of that. Okay, and then the drag, and the washer, the drag, and the washer. So the design is specialized pen design. You can't use other real parts, other real brand parts on this, so just be careful with that. And next, uh, I'm a little bit reluctant to remove the spring. Uh, I'm definitely not going to remove this. You can remove this wire, and you can remove this uh, line holder. But I don't think I will. I'm just going to leave it at that. And for this one, uh, yeah, I think it's better if I show you guys how to do this. It's not really complicated. Uh, but in order to do this, you have to uh, remove... Uh, it's better to remove this one first. Uh, when you're assembling this, it's going to be different uh, steps. But for removal, removal is usually easy. Most people will struggle with uh, reassembling. Okay. There we go. So whenever you're going to remove any spring part, make sure you put your thumb or your finger onto the spring part and then just unscrew it. There we go. There doesn't seem to be any washers here, which is always a good thing. However, there is this, uh, what is called retainer or something. So it sits like that. And this one, we go onto the part. Oh, it's quite hard to show this. There we go. It's going to be like that. So during reassembling, what we need to do is we have to put on the, this part here first and then we put on the spring and then we're just going to take the spring and make sure the spring hook clicks onto this part and it should be good to go. And remember, be careful when you're dealing with the spring. Uh, the spring is prone, especially this kind of, this kind of uh, very small diameter, very fragile spring, it's prone to getting pulled. So just be careful. It's not really hard uh, design. Okay, this is a screw. You can get this screw. Uh, no. Okay, so this screw have its own hope you can see this on the camera so it has it is half uh, threaded so just make sure you remember the screw I don't think you're gonna mistake this both screws with other screws and then just gonna remove this so as usual be careful when you're dealing with with this any springs you have to be careful so the spring as well it has two ends two different size ends so the bigger end will go onto this spring uh, retaining uh, screw and the one with the hook will go onto the uh, clicker dog. All right, so I'm not going to remove this. If you want to remove it, this is fine. And not complicated. Just remove the screw, and then you pull out the wire. And whenever you're going to put it back, put it on, put the wire on, put the wire into the hole, and then just screw it, and you're good to go. Doesn't seem to be any washers even here. All right, so we're done with the spool. Easily done. Not too complicated. And next, the drag knob, which uh, I think it's also not too complicated. There we go. Alright, so just first remove the seal. Easily done. And next we're going to remove these two screws. There's going to be 
clicker spring somewhere. So this is my first time doing this. Doing this uh, reel, doing pen. This is my first time doing pen spin fisher, VI, and my first time doing live liner. So I'm a little bit uh, nervous is an understatement. But most reels will not have too complicated of a design. But for lifeliner, you have to be careful with the lifeliner system. Even for big runners, you have to be very careful. And I can tell you, it will be... It is complicated. I don't say this often on any reels, but this particular design, it's a little bit... It's it's complicated, So and it, it requires finesse when dealing with it. So just be careful. But for most part, I think it should be fine. Okay, so we'll remove these two screws. There we go. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. There will be one spring. The knob clicker, as it calls it, as, as it is called. And this is the uh, the nut where it goes like this. Okay, uh, for this part, the knob, usually I don't service this. What I usually do with all my reel and all my clients' reel is that I'm going to grease like a lot here. And usually I won't open it for like a few years. Unless the reel is dunked into salt water, then I'm going to clean it up. Which will be extra at the cost but yep okay so this is the spring be careful with this part yeah uh, if you lose this uh, it's not going to impede the performance but then again uh, it is definitely not pleasant losing any parts okay so flip this one up and yep just remove it just like that and there will be tension spring as usual and usually there will be washers yep there is one for the bottom side here the bottom side will have this washer Seems to be silicone. There we go. Seems to be silicone washer. So it's going to sit inside here. And the spring is uh, definitely not your average spring design. This is my, uh, truthfully speaking, my first time seeing this kind of spring. Not particularly robust. So on Shimano reels, the, uh, the wire, the spring wire will be like very thick wire. But on this one, it has... Uh, Thin wire, but it's uh, like a beveled design, so doesn't seem to be very robust, but it is fine. Nothing to be concerned with. And that's it for the knob. Uh, very simple design, and definitely uh, will be a little bit uh, much easier to handle. And let's see if, if we can remove this. Some Shimano reels, you definitely can remove this part, but on this one, I'm not so sure. Let's see if we can remove this. It feels like it's moving. Nice uploading. So let's try this side. Ah, uh, yep. So you cannot remove this part. Uh, so be careful when you're handling with this part right here. If you dunk this in salt water, make sure you give it like a very good cleaning and then a very good greasing. Because I don't want to be messing with any parts that is quite hard to remove. Looks like a washer. That seems like the washer cannot be removed as well, which is uh, a shame, really. But then again, not. Uh, hold on, I try to do this. Yep. So this confirms it. This uh, not the handle. This one. That's this part. This particular part right here. You can't remove it. So just be careful. And let's go ahead with this knob cap. There we go. Uh, make sure you grease the knob cap. Uh, over time, this is plastic, so it will not get corroded or rusted. But then again, over time, it will be brittle. So in order, order to avoid. It being brittle and hard to remove, you have to grease it. There's no other way around. All right, and let's remove the screw. It's a big screw. Uh, from what I'm seeing here, you have definitely have to use Loctite when you're gonna uh, reassemble the reel. But that is for the reassembling segment. There we go. Uh, let's see if there's any washer. Usually, there will be a washer here. Usually, uh, I haven't seen. I haven't consulted the reel manual just yet. Yep, no washers, no washer, no washers, and let's see, oh, okay, oh, it's very simple, so there's no bearing, no washers, no bushing either, and yeah, it's a good, well, for me, it's a good design, but uh, there will be a little bit uh, play after a while, because this kind of knob, with use, it's gonna shave off the uh, the inside here and it will become like wobbly over time so it's not uh that hard that uh strange if you find people uh, changing this knob to gamex's knob or any other knobs uh, it is like a very normal very common thing to do 
But anyways, it's up to you. Uh, I think Gomexus is cooking up a uh, handle design like the Gomexus Hunter that can be used for pen. So if you don't want to uh, change the knob, then what you need to do is to buy the handle from Gomexus. I think, if I'm mistaken, there is there, it's already available uh, online. Gomexus knob for pen. Gomexus handle and knob for pen. So make sure you check out their website and their page and see what's cooking up. And that's it. Uh, very, very simple design. Not too complicated. Not not too compl not even complicated. Uh, just be careful with all the spring parts, which I'm going to put in a separate, separate container. And yeah, that's it for the this part. And next we're going to do the mother load, which is the body and rotor. And it will be uh, challenging. That's the right word. Challenging compared to other reels. Alright, so I'm just going to clear things out. And I'm going to go ahead with the main body and rotor. Okay, so now we're going to do the main body and rotor. And in order to do this, uh, in order to remove the rotor, you have to remove the shaft. And in order to remove the shaft, you have to remove the side plate. So we're going to do the side plate first. And in order to do this, uh, as you can see, this one has have six screws on this side. Do not remove this screw. You What you're going to remove primarily is only this five right here and not this one. So let's just uh, go ahead and remove this five. And make sure you subscribe. And you don't have to remove this one yet. If you want to remove it, it's fine. It's going to be tight. So if it's too tight, uh, you have to use a plier. I've already pre-unscrew uh, it just now. So just going to do it like that. You don't have to remove this when you're removing the side plate. But if you want to do it now, it's good. Not a problem. As you can see, there we go. There's a seal there. Cool. So for now, we're just going to put it here. And for this uh, drag stack, uh, what do you call it, cover, uh, you will be needing a special tool, which I'll show you later. So for now, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna remove my primary objective right now is to remove this uh, rotor. So just in order to do that, we're gonna remove all these five screws first. There's a little bit of sorting in the screw holes, which is expected. Is uh, which are expected, which is expected. Okay, there we go. And it's uh, the back screw is a little bit tight. But let's see what's happening. There we go. Okay, and let's see what we have. So this is the bottom screw, the bottom front. Like that. Like that. There we go. Seems like it's same size. All right, let's see this screw. This one is gonna be. So this screw is same length. It's just the head is smaller. The head on the back screw is a little bit smaller this side but I think it's the same length and strangely enough uh, the screw on this one have Loctite but not on this two and we'll see if there's any Loctite on this top screw no Loctite oh yeah there's a little bit of Loctite there we go so it's gonna be like this uh, seems like all is the same length it's just that for this one it's it has a little bit smaller head and next we're going to remove this one do not remove the screw Instead, remove this one because this screw is holding the bit run system. So, by all means, do not remove it yet. Alright, there we go. Remove this one here. There we go. So, you won't be mistaking this screw for other screws. Next, slowly remove this. And as usual, with all reels, do not rush. Do it slowly and do it gently. Go. so this one falls off and you have to be careful because there is one seal there so just be careful when it falls off All right so it sits like this okay and hopefully it's not too hard there we go oh it smells the smell is definitely uh, pen grease no mistaking there definitely 
All right, so this is the system. Uh, not like really, it is a complicated system because uh, this one is going to be a little bit of a nightmare to assemble, for sure, definitely, no doubt about it. And while we are at it, uh, so it seems that the seal is going to fall off, so we're just going to put it back there. So the seal that I showed you here, so it sits there. And now we're going to remove the shaft, and in order to remove it, uh, first off you're going to position the, this one here at the back end, at the most back end. And do not do anything here yet, and do not do anything here yet, because we're going to do it. Uh, but for now, our main priority right now is to remove the shaft so, so that we can remove the rotor. So in order to do that, you have to do this. Oh, it's raining. It's definitely raining. I think I'm going to pause the video for a little bit and let the rain go, and then I'll come back. Alright, so we're back. So we just remove uh, this screw and then I'm going to remove this retainer. There we go. So it's easily removable. And once you remove it, you should be able to remove the shaft. And there you have it. Uh, not too complicated. Well, the real construction is uh, not complicated, but uh, though what is complicated is this uh, the uh, big runner system. Now, this one is like uh, I would say like it's really complicated, like a uh, very fine-tuned machine, but then again, for service people, it's definitely going to be interesting. So these are the two washers, just going to put it back here. So we're going to do this uh, afterwards, uh, because now what we need to do is to disassemble the rotor first. So this one here is a seal. If you want to remove it now, it's fine. But I'm just going to leave it there, because the seal is uh, quite tightly fit into its... Uh, roof but maybe we have to remove this oscillation block there we go so we just remove oscillation block and we should be fine with this part this side here and oh so we can remove the gear now okay so anyways so we just remove the gear I'm just gonna set it there and now we're going to remove the rotor it's pretty tight so be very careful and when I'm gonna reassemble it back I'm gonna screw it pretty tight as well Oops. Okay, so there we go. So it's easily removable. Okay, just gonna set it there. There's a seal here. There it goes, it sits like that. You can see, I hope you can see this in the camera. So the pointy end will sit up and this grooved end will go down here, which is not too complicated. And let's see, this is number, this is 16. Let's see number 14. I think it's number 15, but unfortunately I don't have number 15. So, yeah, it's definitely number 15. So this one will open this side, so it's uh, counterclockwise. Counterclockwise, and there will be a seal here as well. So once we remove this, there will be a seal there. Uh, you can remove it now, but I'm just going to remove it later. And there's also another seal here, another white seal here. So right now I'm just going to remove it and set it aside. And uh, this shaft design is the same as Pan Battle, I think. No, not Pan Battle. The same as Spin Fisher. So for regular Spin Fisher, we're talking about the regular one and the one for surf fishing with the longer spool. It has the same system. So in order to remove the rotor, you have to remove the shaft. And in order to remove the shaft, you have to remove the side plate. Uh, fortunately, Pan made it easy for us to remove the side plate. So it's not a big issue. But then again, when you're uh, going to have to like uh, service only the rotor, it's going to be a little bit more work. I wouldn't say it's particularly hard, it's just more work, which is not a problem for me because I this is what I do. But maybe for uh, home servicing, uh, nah, not really hard to do, to, to tell the truth. Okay, so this is how the this system here works. Not particularly hard. This is the uh, emergency entire reverse. Uh, so this one will... 
when it's removed, when it's uh, spinning. So this part here will spin as well. But if the entire reverse clutch fails, this here will click, they will go out. And from what I'm seeing, I don't think there's any spring. Okay, so it's going to go out and this groove here will catch onto the teeth inside the rotor. Uh, this system is, uh, I wouldn't say the best, but then again, for a reel of this size, it is good enough. But for bigger reels, I would like prefer a much more robust system. But for this size and for its intended use, I think this reel is good enough. Okay, so anyways, uh, we're going to set this one aside and we set everything here aside first. So I'm not going to arrange it. Uh, for the parts arrangement, you can uh, refer to my reassembling video, which I'll do uh, later. I'm going to give it a link, a card up here. Just click it for the reassembling video. Before this, for Stratic FL and Saragossa, I did like a whole video, which is like two hours. And I think it's maybe a little bit too long. So starting from this video, I'm going to do it like one part. Part one is going to be teardown and part two is going to be the disassembling, uh, the reassembling. Okay, so I'm going to clear everything this one up and we'll come back to uh, this three later. For this one, I'm just going to set it aside because there's nothing, no parts uh, left for me to tear down. For, for this three, there will be some for this four and this one, but for this one, I'm just going to set it aside. Okay, so now we come to the rotor. Um, it's not uh, hard, like a particularly complicated design. Uh, one thing that you have to remember is that for the rotor, uh, the paint on the rotor is easily removed with solvent, which I've already demonstrated in the primary uh, teardown. Where I'll rub it a little bit of alcohol and hold, lo and behold, the paint got stripped. Not much, but if you're going to soak this one in any solvent, so the paint will get stripped and it will become grey, because this rotor I think is white originally. So if you strip the paint out, it's not going to be like a huge problem, but then again for cosmetics point of view and for resale value, it's going to be uh, a little bit of impairment. So just be careful when you're dealing, when you're cleaning the rotor. Uh, try not to use any solvent and too corrosive stuff. I think you can use WD-40 good enough. But for maybe alcohol or kerosene, uh, try to avoid it. And for most part, I think it should be fine. Uh, okay, so anyways, so there's two rubber seal here. I So I'm just going to remove it anyway, so it's already peeled off. Uh, but I think for most part, I will not try to remove it because uh, it's very like thin rubber, thin silicone and when you're gonna grease that these two parts here you have to use silicone grease if not then it's gonna be uh, a little bit of uh, an impairment which you can already see that this one is a little bit hard, not just a little bit hard, it's pretty hard to remove so for this one I'm just gonna leave it and since this one already peeled off I'm just gonna put it aside and for this one, I'm just going to leave it at that. And now we're going to remove the uh, line roller. I'm not sure if there's any bearing in this one. I don't think there's any. But then again, let's see what we have. Alright, so there is... Uh, hopefully you can see this in the camera. There's a washer here. Looks like clear washer with uh, teeth. So And the screw itself also have teeth. So just be careful with the washer. And there seem to be any washers here, so we're good here. And next, we're going to remove this. And be careful. Pull this one down. There doesn't seem to be any washer. And there is this uh, bushing. I don't think this one is qualified to be called washer, so let's call it a bushing. And so this uh, end here, which is protruding, we'll do it inside like this. Okay, just put it one side. So there is a seal bearing yeah there's a silk bearing so i'm not going to do anything to the bearing just going to wipe it and then oil it and there uh, doesn't seem to be any washes on this side yep okay so this is the line roller so that's pushing on this side and bearing on this side i'll try to remove it see if we can remove this okay so the bearing we can remove it quite easily there's no left and right orientation and it's a sealed bearing so be careful with this one try not to clean this with alcohol you can but for this video, I'll try to refrain from cleaning. And there's the bushing. And yeah, from what I'm seeing is that uh, this rule will have two sides. The line roller will have two sides. So this part right here is a little bit slanted. So the slanted side will go on this side, and the steeper, the higher angled side will go into that side. Okay, and that side will have the bushing and the uh, much lower steep angle will go will have the bushing 
and I'm not seeing any more parts uh, and this is a good thing it is good enough uh, the construction is good enough it's not like the same as Saragossa which have a lot of seal and then a few more washers but then again for this wheel it is simple and it is good because it is simple and being simple is a good thing and for the wheel of this size this kind of arrangement is already good enough which is why Mr. Alan Hawk decided to give this wheel on number 4 and 5 I think on its uh, Budget offshore wheel, if, if I'm not mistaken. Simple and robust enough for its intended use. But then again, I would prefer that Pen will upgrade the clutch system to a much more stronger system. But then again, this clutch here, if you're going to fish like 5 kilos, 6 kilos of drag, not a problem. Alright, next you remove this. Uh, doesn't seem to be any washers, so we're good here. Alright, easily remove. I think you can remove this one as well. So just flip this one, just pull it out. This is good design. Uh, many uh, reels intended for heavy duty game will not have this system because this one will break if you're not careful and if it's there's too much pressure. But for a reel like size 10,000, you're not gonna go for 50 kilo tuna or 60 pound kubia. So this reel is robust enough for, for its intended use. Although then again, if they can use a much stronger clutch, it will be even better. All right, there doesn't seem to be any washer, although there is looks like it looks like there's some sort of bushing but hold on i'll check with the manual does it seem to be any bushing yep so the color is different here so but this is not the bushing hopefully you can see this you can see the black and white but the white itself is not a bushing i think it is part of a real design uh yeah so it seems like the real is designed like this and then they just push press fit the screw the screw so that the screw sits into the area here but anyways nothing else simple design nice i can't complain and now for this side looks like simple design as well the modern pants uh they are much more simply designed the older ones uh not complicated but then again yep okay so there doesn't seem to be any washers and now remove this carefully make sure your thumb is onto the bail arm remove it carefully there we go. Once the spring kicks out, and you should be fine. And yep, very good. And it is metal. As you can see, as you can hear from the clinging sound. This is metal, and the rotor is also metal, so it is a robust reel. Definitely designed for a uh, big game. But I don't expect uh, to land like 50 pound, like 60, 70 pound tuna on this one, because it will not be able to handle that much. Now, yeah, pressure. Oh, yep. Okay, so just remove the screw. There we go. Yep, smells like pan grease. Okay, just remove it like that. And then this one will not have any washer, hopefully. Make sure you check out the reassembling video. And finally, we're going to remove the rotor brake. Simple design. Uh, highly recommend. I would highly recommend this wheel. It's a little bit more expensive compared to Daiwa BG. But then again, it has this ceiling which holds out pretty well. I mean, this is one, uh, I have like, when I bought this wheel, I also bought Saragossa, and both wheel I haven't maintained, I haven't serviced for about two years, three years, almost three years now, and the condition, the inside condition, like, there is no salt residue or anything, the Saragossa one, I have a little bit salt residue, because that is the my most used reel, for this one, I only use for live baiting, uh, Spanish mackerel, or king mackerel, as I call it in the United States, and yeah, that's it for the rotor, simple design, uh, simple and easily serviceable, not uh, complicated at all, and now we're going to go to the mother load of this reel, which is the this one. And tell you the truth, I'm a little bit I'm nervous. I'm nervous for this system, but we'll see what we can do. So I'm just gonna clear things out and we'll go ahead with the rest of the main body parts. Okay, so now comes the fun part of this reel, which is the the system here. Okay, let's see how it works. So it works like this. But okay, anyways, uh, just to show you guys how this system works. So this one have one tension spring and this another spring here. Uh, this one, I'm going to leave it for last uh, because this one is going to be a headache if you're not careful because the spring will shoot out and the chances you're going to find it back. Usually, my experience is pretty slim. All right, so anyways, uh, and before we begin, let's talk a little bit about this shaft. So this shaft is unremovable. I think you can remove this because from the looks of it, this... Uh, brass looks like brass. It's actually screwed onto the shaft from the looks of it at least. 
uh, but I will not even try to remove this. I'm just going to leave it at that because it is part of the system. But what I'm going to remove is the seal here. Okay, so let's, uh, don't pry, don't force it too much because if you break the seal, it's going to be a little bit of a problem. Not too much, but there we go. If you don't want to remove this, it's fine. There we go, so we remove the seal. And this is the spool washer. You can remove this. You don't have to remove the seal in order to remove the washer. But as you can see, the tolerance is pretty tight. Be careful not to tear it up. Yep, there we go, there we go. Okay, so while we're at it, I'm just going to remove the, booth, the washer, spool washer and seal. And that's about it. You can't remove anything else, so we're just going to leave it at that and don't do anything to it. All right, and now for this part, uh, this is the main gear washer. So as you can see, there is two brass colored, which is thinner, and this one is a little bit thicker. Be careful not to tear any up. So on this particular reel, they have this one have have three. Some reels will have uh, two, some reels will have four, some maybe even five. Uh, if you feel that the reel is a little bit tight to turn, maybe remove one of this thinner washer but keep this washer. All right, anyways, just gonna set this one aside. I am uh, a little bit nervous about removing this one, this geary thing here. You can remove this. What you need to do is just remove this e-clip and you can remove it, but I think it is best if I leave it as is because from what I'm seeing, there's some sort of spring there. Uh, yeah, okay, so I see that that's how it works. And now that I'm seeing how it works, I think, oh my God, Looks like I, I remove this one as well. Uh, be careful, don't rush as usual, do not rush with any of this part. Whenever you're seeing a spring, the first thing you need to do is to be very careful, do not rush, don't do anything. There we go. And since there is one spring here, be very, very careful when you're handling this part right here. Alright, so, oops, oh, damn it. Alright, so I'm seeing. How it works so this one will go like this and the spring will go like that uh, but yeah so when you're reassembling this yep there we go all right so that's how it's removed okay that's good let's see if we can remove the spring i hope we can and yeah we can remove the spring but then again with all spring parts just be careful Definitely do not rush. Okay. Don't rush, don't do anything stupid. Keep calm and do this slowly and most of the time you should be fine. Let's see if we can use this. There we go. Okay. Oops. All right, so we're done here. So that is the spring, coil spring, from the looks of it, and nothing else. All right, so we're good here. Set this one aside first, and we're going to remove this part right here. Uh, for this part, it's going to be a little bit challenging. So first, I'm going to just going to remove this side here. Okay, so there's a seal here. Okay, I'm just going to uh, leave it at that for now. And we're just going to concentrate on removing this oscillation gear. Be careful. There we go. Doesn't seem to be any washers. Yep. And next, just remove this. Be careful as well. Alright, there we go. Okay, so there's one washer here. And be careful because it feels flimsy. Yep, feels really flimsy. And there is a notch there, and that notch I think will sit onto here. Yep. Okay, so we're good here. And there seems to be anything else. All right, and now which one should I do first? Let's see. Uh, first off, I'm going to remove this 
seal here because we have to remove it anyways but doesn't seem to be like it's cooperating very well all right so there we go uh, do not be rough on this one uh, because this is contoured to the shape uh, but as usual be careful of everything uh, do not leave everything for granted and most of the time you should be fine and right away you can see that this two screws it's already stripped uh, the stripping is from the factory production because they use machinery to screw this one on so usually with machine screwdriver it will have too much torque and it will ruin the screw uh, the screw space there okay it's good there is a seal here yep just push it don't be rough take your time and it seems like this one is removable now so we're just gonna remove it now okay it's good and there seems to be a spring here so you're just gonna okay so the spring here and the spring here and uh, this really is definitely not easy for the average people but for now let's see if we can remove the bearing it seems like it's pretty tightly okay so there's another screw here so there's three screws holding the bearing Ooh, i never like the smell of pan grease because it smells like uh regular machinery grease but anyways so now that all three screws are out I'm just gonna push this one down okay <clears throat> so this one will sit like this and the bearing will sit on top of it okay so when we're gonna reassemble this we're just gonna put this one on first and then we put on the bearing Oops. okay let's try putting this one on one more time So it's pretty tight, the tolerance is pretty tight, which is, uh, believe it or not, tight means good. But then again, with tightness, just be careful. Okay, so we're good here. And this one will sit it to this one here like this. And it goes down like that. Okay. Alright, so we're good here. Man, this video is much longer than I predicted it's going to be, but anyways. Uh, Okay, so we're good with this one. Uh, I'm going to remove this one first, I think, before we go on to the entire reverse. And then we're lastly, we're going to do this one. And for this cover here, uh, there is two uh, seals. The first one is here and the second one is here. Uh, you can remove this, definitely, but it's going to be uh, challenging to put it back on, which I'm feeling regret <laughs> right now because I just remove it. But then again, uh, if you remove it, just be careful. And for this one right here, just remove it just like that. And you're good here. And finally, for this part, and there's also a seal. No? Oh, I thought it was a seal, so it's not a seal. But it feels like it should have a seal. Maybe I accidentally pulled it out. No, so it's not a seal, okay. So, which is good. Okay, uh, now we're going to remove this one. And for this part here, yeah, it's going to need a special uh, tool. So, this is a tool. It comes with the reel. So, if you're going to buy this reel secondhand, a used reel, make sure you are provided with this key here so this is for opening for not opening for tightening this drag here for this reel you can tighten the tolerance of each uh, lever stage so the tighter you're going to tighten this the tighter it's going to get but for most part i don't think this is truthfully necessary but when you're buying this reel used make sure you are supplied with this key as well You can use like a plier for opening this, but I would much highly prefer that you have this one on hand. And if you're buying this, you this reel used, make sure you have it. It is applied with the reel. Okay, so we uh, okay. Okay, so this one has its own uh, drag stack. First one is this metal washer, and it has its ear. Okay, and then the washer, and then. Okay, so there's a retaining clip, and whenever there's a retaining clip, I'm, yeah, I'm always nervous whenever dealing with retaining clip, but 
Deaths and retain inside this wheel. And it is not always a weapon site to tell the truth. Is this really a thing click? Yeah, it is a thing click. Oh, is it? Hold on. Let's try to just. Yeah, okay, so it's not a retain click. But it looks like it though. Let's see if we can remove it. Alright. So. Yep. This looks like a retain click, but it is not a retain click. It's just part of this part here. And there's a washer, so the washer will go inside here. And the washer is cut so that it fits exactly to this shape here. And there seems to be another washer. Or maybe not a washer. Yeah, uh, I don't think you can easily remove this washer. But again, we're just going to leave it at that. And let's see the reels manual. Yeah, the reels manual also lists this part as one piece. And because of that, I'm not going to remove because this is spring here. This is a spring. So I'm just gonna, not going to remove this. But when you're cleaning, just make sure you do a thorough cleaning. Uh, try to use this carburetor cleaner, the spray type. And then just ram grease into that and you should be fine. And next we're going to remove this. So it goes to this uh, position. There we go. So this washer is contoured to the shape. <coughs> Alright, excuse me. And... Um, Okay, so this washer here is a little bit different. So this one have a metal center and then the carbon fiber seems that it's glued onto this washer. So I'm just going to leave it at that. And then this washer here seems like it's the same as this one. Let's give it a check. I think it's the same. Yep, it's the same. Looks like it. Although this one seems like it's bigger, a little bit bigger. And then, oh, for this part, we're going to remove it from this side. So this part gonna have the longer side and the shorter side. So the longer side will sit up like this. And the shorter side will go down. There's a notch there for the shorter side, which is a good thing. And finally, this part right here, uh, you should be able to remove this. Yep, there we go. So this part spins. But uh, I'm not sure if you can remove this because it seems like this one is... Okay. So there is a clip after all. You can see this in the camera. There's a clip holding this piece. And it's like the type of clip that I never liked. Oh, so just gonna it has two notch there, so be careful. You just have to press the two notch down. Make sure it's held with this sturdy uh, tweezer and you just push it down. And it, this one, this is the clip. Push it down and then this one will come out. <clears throat> so it's gonna sit like that. So this one will go inside and yeah i wouldn't say it's hard but then again when i whenever i'm dealing with this kind of reel it's always nervous i'm always nervous because anything can go wrong okay so we're good here and finally we're going to disassemble this part here so this one will not be too hard just gonna open the screws go with the screw there we go Alright, carefully lift this one up. There's going to be seal here. Alright, uh, give me a few minutes. Okay, um, so we've we just removed this and there's a seal here. Uh, be careful with this seal, be careful with any seal actually. Uh, because when you're going to clean, when you do cleaning, <coughs> excuse me. When you're going to do cleaning, uh, some seals is very sensitive to corrosive agents, and some seals are even more sensitive to alcohol or kerosene or even oil, some oil. So whenever you uh, do a maintenance and servicing of any reels, if you can remove it easily, uh, then definitely remove it. If it is uh, quite hard, like the seal is embedded 
into the groove or any groove or any uh, situation, if it's too hard to remove, then I would highly recommend not to remove it. Because in many times, in many cases, the reels I've serviced myself and the reels I've I get from my clients who do their own servicing and then suddenly they tear up the seal. If that happens, then nothing much can be done. You have to buy another seal. And in this case, you have to buy like from Pen or Pure Fishing. And if you're in the US, it's pretty easy to get. If you're outside of the US or Australia, any other parts of the world other than US and Australia, you're going to be a little bit uh, challenged when you're going to find these seals. It's cheap, but then again, postage will be like, in my country, it will be like 100 ringgit. Hopefully not, not 100 for small parts. I guess it's not, it's not going to be 100, but again, you get the idea. This seal is like a dollar, maybe a, a US dollar, one US dollar, two US dollar at most. And then postage will be about 20 US dollars. So not worth it. Not worth it. Local uh, pure fishing will not honor any parts, but you can order it from a fishing tackle shop because some of them is have very good uh, aftermarket service. But then again, it's not going to be cheap. All right. So anyways, <clears throat> we got here. And next we're going to remove the shaft at the pinion gear and it comes out with the entire reverse and I'm just going to show you so this is the bearing so it has one bushing on the top uh, washer so the top washer here and then this bearing it's easily removed from the holding what do you call this holding bushing Okay, so we're good here, and I think this one is different size from this one, yep. And this one is silver colored. Uh, it's thin, so be careful, and you won't be mistaking it, this washer for the main gear washer, hopefully. But then again, be careful because you can easily lose this. It's only a few cents, but if you lose this, it's going to be a few dollars. Okay, and then the entire reverse. So this is the entire reverse. Um, <clears throat> not complicated design. This is like what you're gonna get in most Chinese made real like casking, uh, what else Chinese brand casking, uh, what not. You can go to Aliexpress and most will have this bearing. Uh, I would highly recommend it pen use a much stronger uh, anti reverse clutch. But then again, uh, this is good enough for a reel of this class, of this size, because you're not gonna be using this reel on like 30 pound tuna, definitely, uh, like a 60 pound tuna. You can, but I won't really recommend. And this entire reverse clutch will get destroyed. Uh, and in some cases, it's pretty easy to get. Uh, because uh, if you order this from other real uh, like casking, uh, they, most of the time, they can supply this particular uh, entire reverse clutch. But then again, uh, yeah, just thinking about it gives me a headache. It's definitely good, but for the application of this intended use, I'm a little bit skeptical. Okay, so this is the bushing, the yeah the bushing, and then finally this bearing, same size. The top and bottom one is the same size, so you can exchange it to one another. And this is the pinion, no washers. I'm not seeing any at least. And there we go. And usually there will be one washer here. Usually, not all the time. Yep, doesn't seem to be any, which is a good thing. Uh, this is not rust. This is not uh, grease mixed with rust. This is uh, pen grease becoming oxidized. This is already like almost three years, three year old reel. Uh, the original pen grease is blue colored, but it would change to this color. And you definitely can see that there is little color change. Like this part right here, this is like used grease. This is oxidized grease. So used grease will have darker color because the grease will be burnt with use. But with blue pen, pen grease, uh, over time, it will become this color. So if you open up this reel and you see that it's like rusting. So <clears throat> be at ease, it is not rust. It's just uh, the pen blue grease oxidizing. And I will be using this grease for this servicing. This is SKF LGGB, a little bit thick. Eh, no, not this one. Uh, SKF LGFP. Sorry, this is a little bit thick. Uh, this is a uh, food intended for food machinery grease, but I've been using this grease for like bigger reels, like size ten thousand and above, eight thousand and above. Uh, it works well, but I think for SKF, this is the best grease. This is synthetic grease, but then again, this grease is a little bit thin. Not as tacky as the LGFP, uh, pretty good grease. No, it's not just pretty good, it's really good grease. The only downside is that this grease is uh, not as tacky as I wanted it. So it's fine for smaller reels, like size 6000 and below. But for bigger reels, I would prefer something much more tackier. Okay, and uh, for this part, I'm also a little bit inclined to open up. But let's try. Okay, so it's not a screw. It is a screw, I think, but I don't think you can remove it. So in order to remove this one, 
Ooh, be careful. There will be a spring here, so be careful. Okay, carefully remove this. As you can see, that's the spring. It's going to sit like that, and the spring will sit there. There we go. Hopefully, you can see this. Yep, there we go. So, this is the spring. Uh, be careful with this one. This is a pretty brittle spring. Yep. So, make sure you put this one in a separate container. And, yep. Okay. And we are done with this side here. And, and what's left is this one, and this one will be a separate segment. And, okay, so we're good. I don't think there's anything else that we need to do. Uh, this one is good. And for this side cap here, there's a seal here. And from what I'm seeing, this... No, it's not a coating, so we can remove this. But be careful when you're removing this, because... Uh, there we go. Alright, so we're good here. What is this white stuff? Okay, anyways. So this is the side cap and the seal. <coughs> Excuse me. And looks like we're good here. Nothing else to do. Hold on. There is something else to do. Yep, there's a bushing here. Thank God I didn't miss it. Okay, and nothing else. Yep, so we're good on this side. And we're done here. And hold on, there's one more thing. This side right here. So, yep, I'm just going to leave it at that. Just going to clean it and then greasing it. There is a spring here, so we're just going to leave it at that. Okay, so we're done here. Uh, thankfully, we do it. I've done it without too much of a problem. Uh, the only problem that we're going to have is this side. So let me clean things up and we're going to concentrate for this uh, side plate. Okay, so now we're going to do the uh, big uh, life lining system. And to tell the truth, I'm a little bit nervous, but it has to be done. All right, but first we're going to remove the bearing. Oh, yeah, it's pretty tight. Oh, shit. There we go. Okay, so there's three screws. And we can remove this there. And it seems like it's stuck pretty good. Let's see what we can do. slowly and do this <clears throat> very carefully as to not tear the rubber seal off the reel and the seal on the bearing there we go okay so it's pretty tight tolerance which is good but with tight tolerance usually things are not going to be as easy but well nothing much can be done about it so we're just going to go with the flow so we're done here and next comes the front part uh, and i think what we need to do is to remove this one first and this is a spring, and it's very uh, rigid, I think, so be careful when you're removing this. And we're going to remove this one first, and now we're going to uh, remove the screw. On. There we go. And remember to keep your fingers onto the spring, because I think this one will shoot out if you're not careful. Okay, there we go, there will be one uh, <clears throat> small uh, seal there, the red colored seal, so just carefully remove this, and make sure your fingers are on the, on the spring. Oops, seems like I'm doing this wrong, but uh, no, no, this is the correct way to do this, just have to be very careful. There we go. Careful, careful, don't rush. There we go. <clears throat> there it goes, you can see the washer, the seal. And be careful because this one can tear up pretty easily. 
There we go. Okay, so now we're just going to remove this part right here. Yep, that's good. And you have to remember the orientation where you're going to put this one back. And this is the spring. So this curvy part right here will go inside here. Okay, uh, never mind, I think. Hold on, I'll try and put it back. Yep, there we go. So it's going to be like this. Okay, just set it, put that one aside. And next we need to remove this one. And remember the orientation, do not rush. Uh, I'll show you in the reassembling segment. Right, for now, we have to remove this one first. Yep, I think we have to remove this part first. And then we're gonna do the, this one right here. This part does not have any spring, so it's gonna be pretty easy. And I don't think there's any washers, which is a good thing. There we go, so this is one piece. So of all the gears is one piece, so you don't have to worry uh, it being two or three pieces. And now we're going to remove. Yeah, we're going to remove this one first. There we go. Right. And finally, we're going to remove this one. So this one will have the spring. So be careful when you're dealing with spring parts. Oh, there we go. Be careful and. It should be fine most of the time. Right. I'm going to remove this. So this one will have two parts. The spring will have two parts. The one with the round part and the one with the hook part. And the hook part, we're going to put it there. And the spring orientation, this one will sit up. And this one will go down. And yeah, so anyways, uh, make sure you tune in to the uh, reassembling video. I'll leave a card uh, somewhere around here, so you guys can just click it. And I think we are done with the uh, entire reverse, uh, with the Lifeliner system. Uh, it's uh, not, I wouldn't say it's complicated, I was expecting it to be complicated. It's not complicated, but then again, when you're going to reassemble this, it's going to be a challenge, a little bit of a challenge, especially when you're going to put this part back on. But other than that, uh, hopefully it goes fine. Okay, so we're done with the teardown, and uh, it's a pretty good reel, in my opinion at least, uh, because I've used this for almost 3 years now, so it's a pretty good reel, and if you service this and maintain it good, it will last you quite a bit of time, and if you're in North America or Australia, parts will be much easier to get, but if you're outside of North America and uh, Australia, uh, which I'm from Malaysia, uh, pen parts will be a little bit challenging, you can get it, but it'll be a little bit ch challenging like Okuma and Daiwa, some of Daiwa parts is like impossible to get but then again, uh, maintain it well and, and it will last you quite a bit of time okay so we're good here and uh, make sure you tune in to the assignment video and see you guys again